Well, good morning. It is a fresh morning here in England. Um, hopefully you can see us here in the dark. But we are off to Stonehenge, Stonehenge uh, which is an hour, hour and a half. Um, 40, 45, probably two hours from my drive. Yep, something like that, two hour drive. But it is six and a half degrees, uh, heat is on. Let's get on the road. Don't really know where we're going to go here, but we have, well, I guess we did want to see Stonehenge. Uh, try and compare it to the Stonehenge in Esperance. Esperance. <laughs> um, so I guess we'll get into it, see what we see along the way. Might be a little short episode, but still something something new and cool to see. Let's get into it. You ready? Should we get a coffee first? We'll try it. Yep. So for, I guess, people comparing the fuel prices over here, unleaded, 157.9, which is about, I'd like to say around $3, something around there, a litre, but there it is, 25 litres, 40 pounds. And another cool thing they have got, which Aussie shops haven't got, fresh croissants. <laughs> Especially chocolate croissants, I'm going one of them. Yeah. Yep. Chocolate croissant and a coffee. Righto, fueled up, coffeeed up, croissanted up. Um, you got your maps on? Yes. Some sort of idea, rough idea where we're going. Uh, we did have to book tickets online. We didn't have to, but it's cheaper to book online, isn't it? Uh, Not too sure how much cheaper, but 20 quid each. Um, at 35 40 dollars or something like that something around there for a ticket into stonehenge uh you have to book a time which is i don't know we'll see how we go we'll book 9 30 hopefully we're going to be there on time um but let's get into it hit the road you excited no <laughs> so she's driving again so this could be um chaos let's do it So here we are at Stonehenge. We are. And um, by the looks of everyone, they're all wearing gum boots and... I'll be walking back. <laughs> by the looks of it, it's gonna be pretty muddy. So hopefully it's not as muddy as everyone's making it out to be. But this is it, Stonehenge. We were able to see Stonehenge on the way in which is pretty cool. Um, and we were seeing some, a couple of campers, weren't we? Yeah. Little camper vans. Yeah, it looked like they stayed there, not Yeah, I don't know how they did that, but... Not too sure where we go from here. And it already looks to be a massive, I guess, tourist Hot spot. The building here and another couple of buildings up there. Not too sure what's going on up there. So for the pay 20 quid each, two tickets uh, and a map, and that does include a bus trip, isn't it? Yeah, bus to the stone so you can walk. The walk is 35 minutes, so I'm out. <laughs> Especially in them. <laughs> But anyway, let's, um, I don't know where we're gonna go from here. We'll have a quick little look around and then get the bus up there, I guess. Cool. Gonna already say they're very helpful, aren't they, at the front? Yeah. Sort of, I think they saw that we were clueless. Yeah. 
All right. The deal is we're going to jump on a bus and race up there and see Stonehenge first and then come back and check out all the stuff around here. Which by the looks of it, there's a couple little houses, some of the stones, more up there, isn't there? Yeah, uh, stuff everywhere. Let's get on here. The National Trust owns and cares for more than 800 hectares of the ancient landscape that you're travelling through. What did this landscape look like when Stonehenge was built? It actually looked quite similar to today. If you'd like to walk part of the way to Stonehenge, you can get off here. Push the bell to let the driver know that you want to get off. There's a path under the wood to a viewpoint where there's information about the other monuments. Thank you. And ensure you have all Thank you. So, four and a half thousand years ago, yep. um, and they were built. Something to do with the sun, weren't they? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm useless. And looking out there, you can see all these little vans. It looks like everyone's camped out there, don't they? What a view to wake up. Yeah. yeah I mean, we're not too sure. It might be a street that runs down here, but it's sort of full of all campers. waking up to that view and I suppose it's got people like us walking up and down here all day but cool little spot that one are you cold? I can already say it's a lot warmer than a lot colder, sorry, than the Esperance one. Oh, yeah. That was nice and warm. But also, they haven't got a big wall around this one. Should keep walking around. This seems to be the high traffic area. There's people everywhere. But that's it. So another thing here as well, no drones, which is Yep, you sort of deal with that. But compared to Esperance, this one, yeah, definitely well weathered. Been here for thousands of years. It looks more natural. Does look a lot more natural, doesn't it? Like it's got moss and stuff growing on it. And a lot less as well. Like um, Esperance is very like perfect. Everything's lined up perfect. This is sort of all over the shop. Is that mud? <laughs> Are you going for a walk? Because <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, I'll go for a walk around. We can walk back that way. So there's a cool bit of information. The midwinter mid -winter sunset is directly opposite the midsummer sunrise viewed from the centre. And the solstice axis. Uh-uh. 
Oh, no. That's so all around Stonehenge. They're early age, early Bronze Age burial mounds, which you can see one just over there. You can see a couple out in the distance there. So that's pretty interesting. So another thing as well compared to Esperance is you can, well sorry, this one you can walk a whole way around it, you can't walk inside it or up to it, which is fair enough, it is thousands of years old, uh, but the one in Esperance you can walk up to, you can touch, you can sort of walk all through in between it all. But this one, yeah, fair enough, a couple of thousand years old, so is what it is. How'd you go? How's your white shoes? Still nice and clean? You get a better picture here. So this line is the mid winter sunset through there and the midsummer sunrise. <laughs> so straight through there. If you look that way as well, there is sort of remnants of ditches which apparently is the avenue if I read that right <laughs> and that is the original entrance into Stonehenge oh, there's a bloke in a way <laughs> anyway let's keep going plenty of information around So that's a pretty cool aerial shot. You can see the different little, whatever they are, original constructions. And then that's where we are there, Stonehenge. 1.7 mile long rectangular monument defined by a bank and a ditch. We don't know the purpose of or meaning of this huge enclosure, but its presence in landscape may have influenced the sighting of st what the sitting i can't i can't read start again can't. <laughs> sitting sitting of stonehenge several centuries later so that's cool we got stonehenge a couple of other different ones here i'm guessing they're the burial ancient burial ones or burial whatever they are and then this one here pretty cool pretty cool <laughs> Stone is. I can't feel my feet. No, it's freezing. <laughs> That's about it, isn't it? Stonehenge. Well, that's going to do us here, Stonehenge. Um, 
Make our way back and see if we can get some drone footage somewhere. Yep, see what we can do. We're going to check out whatever's around the little entry point and then go from there, really. Hopefully, I think we've beaten the crowds. Yeah. Did see a couple of coaches come up that road. Anyway, let's get on the little bus and head back there. Yeah, so by the looks of it as well, where all these little vans are parked, I believe it's not a free entry, but you can walk down sort of the outside of all this, what we're in. So we probably could have planned a little bit better and saved 20, 40 quid. You don't know, though, do you? But, yeah, didn't want to risk yeah, it. anyone turn right off that A3. <laughs> where all these little vans Seriously. are parked. It is sort of an exclusion zone. You might be trespassing someone's property, who knows. So some cool stuff, but just again, another, I guess, typical store, isn't it? That's cool. Mum, you'd love that, but... <laughs> yeah, Mum, you'd love that, but unfortunately... 18. 18 pounds, that's a bit steep. 30 odd dollars. Stonehenge Monopoly. So I guess that is a, like a, I don't know, typical gift shop, isn't it? Like the usual sort of places you go, but did get a little magnet. So we've been here, we've done it. So I guess we'll have a look around here now. Yeah. Whatever's around here, there's a little coffee shop. We'll see how we go. There's some good photos of the drone. Cool, isn't it? A straw roof. It's homes of the builders. Ah. People who built and used Stonehenge probably lived in houses like these. They were recreations based on the archaeological remains of buildings excavated at Durrington Walls, just over a mile from Stonehenge. Oh, you can actually go inside, and that's cool. Perfect height for you. <laughs> I don't know how much you're going to see in here with this little GoPro. does doesn't it and I'm guessing they'd have a fire maybe there's no real chimney but 
I know I'd have a fire right there. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Yeah, definitely beat the rush there, beat the crowds. What have we got there? Could you move this last uh, stand? Can you move it? Can, Can you give you? it a try? It's an exact replica of Stone 60, one of the upright sarsons of the inner horseshoe. Original stone weighs about 28 tonnes. Give it a try. Hundred strong. <laughs> oh, did you see it move? Maybe. <laughs> yeah, massive, isn't it? Is it cold? Yeah. What is it? Sun's on it. So with our ticket as well, we do get free entry into an exhibition, which I'm not sure what to expect, so we'll do that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. If you want to test the healing powers yourself, I can challenge you today inside the exhibition. There's a blue stone sitting on outside one of the cabinets. You can touch the blue stone and perhaps you can make a wish and then next year come back and tell me, did your wish come true? It would be lovely to find out what would happen. And do that. Uh, <laughs> when you go to the stones today, unfortunately, you're not allowed to touch the stones. So you take the advantage of touching them today. They are with the white flecks inside the stone. It's called speckled dolerite. Well, there you go. Prehistoric temple, the stones are aligned with the movements of the sun. That's what you're trying to find? Yeah, I knew it had something to do with the sun, but... The stones are aligned with the movements of the sun. So that's pretty cool that Stonehenge and prehistoric Japan have a lot in common. Is that the next stop, is it? Japan. Japan. I do, yeah. <laughs> I'd love to. Guess one day we'll have to get to Japan and find out about their stones. It's more money. <laughs> it is the ruthless past. Ruthless or ruthless?
That does, doesn't it? I'm standing inside, yeah. Prince, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And that's what it's like now. Mm -hmm. Oh, the camera's having a meltdown. Yeah, it doesn't like digital, does it? No. But this is a pretty cool little room here. Yeah? Sort of walk around the centre. Where are you from? I'm Costa Rica. <laughs> right, that's that then. Definitely beat the crowds. So that is a really interesting, cool little walk around that exhibition there. Well worth it, the exhibition. <laughs> anyway, let's um, let's do it. Yeah, a toilet. Get on out of here. Yeah, you? Way too busy in this coffee. <laughs> You'll get coffee on the way back. Yes, stop. 100%. Um, what was I going to say? The um, Oh, yeah, we probably could have done it free down that little side track. Yeah. But that exhibition, 100%, 100% worth it. It's really cool to just walk around and see all the, I guess, the history, all the little bits that they've found and put on display. Mm -hmm. And I guess seeing what it's like in the middle with the, the big screens. Anyway. Let's get on out of here. Coffee time. <laughs> Can't see you. <either. laughs> no, the sun's really bright. It is an absolutely beautiful day here. Picked the right day, didn't we? Yeah, I'm so glad we didn't come on the other day. <laughs> Pouring down. So this is the traffic on the way out. <laughs> uh, we thought we could pull over somewhere up here and fly the drone sort of away from Stonehenge and get a good picture of it, but there's just no chance we're going to be able to do that especially with this traffic, it's um, horrible. <laughs> Might be a parking bay. What's he doing? Look, parking bay here. <laughs> We did manage to get the, the little drone up and get some sort of footage of Stonehenge. We had to be right out off their property and just away from everything, which was pretty cool. I'm pretty happy we got it up. Uh, the last little clip though, you see what sort of goes into us getting the drone up. <laughs> some of the horrible, horrible little roads that we get ourselves into. But anyway, that's gonna do us for Stonehenge. Uh, awesome little spot. Let's get on the road, get on out of here. Am I getting out? Yeah. Oh, I don't know, there's plenty of potholes. <laughs> 
You got this. I just don't know how deep they are. Be strong. Filled with water. Easy. If you can see the traffic in the other lane there, that is another reason why we left so early, seven o'clock. It's, um, what is it now, one o'clock now, and we're not too far from home, but the traffic is through the roof now. We just had to do a little detour to cut out. An accident. Yeah, an accident. If anyone's been to England and been on the M25, it's the ring road around London, and it is horrible. Um, I've been stuck on here for hours when I used to work here, but, yeah, that's a big reason why we left so early. Um, but that's going to do us for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. It is a short little episode. Well, hope it's a short little episode. Not too sure how much footage we got. Um, but we did get to see Stonehenge, the real Stonehenge. So I'm bloody over the moon with that. Um, big thanks to Soj, the driver. <laughs> anyway, hope you enjoyed the episode. And I guess we will see you on the next one. There's a good view of all that traffic. Bumper to bumper. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Whoa. Whoa, whoa. Shoot me, that was shoot me, yeah. <laughs> it's so unnecessary. But uh, this is probably going to be our second last episode in England. Maybe. Try and get to London. Yeah, we are hoping to get to London tomorrow, do another episode, but there is a rail strike. Uh, yeah, I need to look it up. If we leave early, it might be okay. Yeah, but we'll see we'll how see. we go. Yeah. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see you on the next one, hopefully in London. If not, play it by ear. Cheers for watching. Thank you. Bye. saying man what yeah 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 Aubrey's hole we did manage to get the GoPro up and uh GoPro? The drone. Ryan, yeah. we did manage to get the drone up